when you start talking about teamwork and um, when you start talking about uh, pulling a team together, a problem, a challenge, a crisis only does one thing. It pulls them together. So if you can't pull a team together at a time of crisis, you'll never pull a team together. It's, it's, it's just the best time to pull the team together. Uh, a few years ago when we saw things going the way they were going and everybody in the economy saw things going the way they were going and lots of people wondering where their job is and what's going to happen, etc. We pulled our team together and said, let's get, make, make one thing perfectly clear. Number one, we're increasing your salaries. This is 2009 by 9%. Number two, nobody will get laid off. Number three, we need you now to step up and do your part. When that was all over at the end of 2009, um, we doubled our profitability, we increased our sales, um, we reduced our debt by a third, and we did twice as many capital projects as we'd ever done before. In a time of crisis, that's the time that you pull your team together. And we use a term, ferocious togetherness. We're together. And, and if you do that and enjoy doing that, then in fact, uh, you can really go somewhere, somewhere special. My daughter is a clinical psychologist um, up in Chicago. And she says, we have Kentuckians, but we also have Altechians. And she knows what an Altechian is. And they're gregarious and they, they mix well. They're, they're loyal, they're fun. Um, and, and for the most part, you know, they, they want to make things happen. But we have this ferocious togetherness and that's really what it's all about. Our mission is to drive this company and everybody who, who's in this company to heights that we've n never even dreamed about. Mm -hmm. um, our mission is to use the company and, and all the things that we do to help us with our philanthropic activities, to help us with uh, new business opportunities, to help us with driving science uh, and using science, help us with get more, more people into science. Our business is to make sure that the meat you eat and the food you eat is more nutritious. And that's our business. And if we can combine fun and passion with that business and profitability, then it's, it's a win-win, win-win-win situation. <laughs> when the question is asked, how do we take our lessons and teach other CEOs some lessons, or even more important, how do we take some of the things that they know and teach us some things? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to have this interaction. Um, all we can do is show people what we do. And we're totally open about this. We, there are no secrets per se in Alltech. In fact, that may be one of our faults. We don't have any <laughs> secrets. Um, but I do believe that we have to get across it. Yeah, you know, there, there has to be a profit in, in everything to drive a business. But at the same time, there has to be a realization that it's not the next quarter and only the next quarter. It's the next five years and it's the next 10 years and it's a longevity. In this country, we have lots and lots of problems and hence opportunities. We have a problem with, uh, with our energy and uh, I believe the figure is 0.7 trillion is our deficit because of oil. So when are we going to step up and say, hey, we will become energy independent? After all, we have the technology, be it solar panels, be it wind power, be it um, biofuels, be it algae. We have the technology. We need to leave our politics outside the door. We need to focus on the problems. We need to get all the CEOs together, perhaps, and say, okay, now let's make things happen. Um, my job and our job is to ensure that this company continues to be successful. And success means different things. It can mean profits. It can mean pushing the advance of science further out. It can mean attracting people to us. Um, it can frankly mean job security and career security that they have uh, they have somewhere they know the company is going. You know, I have a wonderful job in a wonderful company. And a friend of mine um, 
was in Iwo Jima, and he was 17 years old when he went to Iwo Jima. Um, and Charlie is probably 88 or something like that now. And Charlie used to tell me, he said, you know what, we're in a company, Alltech, where we have nice people we work with. We're in a company that we are producing products which have an impact. We're in a company, he said, and he and I would sit there in the afternoon where we can have a cup of coffee in the afternoon and a donut. And you know the darndest thing he'd say? And I'd say, no, what is it? What is the darndest thing? <laughs> they pay us to do this job. That's what it's all about. And that's how you get people with you.